You talked earlier about Tiger Woods being not a very political um, sportsman. Uh, he had a surprisingly political response to Barack Obama's victory. Uh, we'll play it. Take a look. I think it's absolutely incredible to have, basically, he represents America. He's multiracial, and I... I was hoping it would happen in my lifetime. You know, my father would, was was hoping it happened in his lifetime. He didn't get to see it, but um, I'm lucky enough to have, have seen you know a, a person um, of color in in the White House. What do you think your father would say if he were alive to see it? He would have cried. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Tiger Woods there talking about what Barack Obama's victory meant to him. What do you think? Not surprising. I mean, that's one of I think one of the exciting things about this particular moment is that politics have become almost trendy and fashionable. <laughs> I mean, there, there's a basketball player for the Washington Wizards named Gilbert Arenas, who's very quirky and very popular and very funny. His nickname for himself for many years was the Black President. You know, that's what he called himself because he played in D.C. And Gilbert Arenas is somebody who criticized teammates several months back for taking a stand for Obama. He's criticized other teammates for being political in general. He just got a uh, vote for change tattooed along his finger. I mean, it's kind of what you do right now. And <laughs> and if Tiger Woods wants to speak out more, that's fantastic. I say more power to him. But I do think it's very important that Tiger Woods stand for something other than selling us Nike products. Which, which finger? Uh, the ring finger, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Good question, though. I, I, I not, not the Rahm Emanuel middle finger. No. <laughs> I couldn't let you go without talking about what I fear may be a massive upsurge, or I, I think maybe won't be a massive upsurge uh, in the sporting world, and that is of wolf shooting from helicopters. Sarah Palin doesn't seem to be going away. No. The notion of, the, the discussion of sport in the context of, you know, hunting um, is something that you talk about occasionally. Yeah. Do you think we're going to hear less of this in the future? I hope. Let, let me quote Chris Rock here. Go uh, for it. The great political thinker. Chris Rock said, when he hears about Sarah Palin's extracurricular pursuits, like shooting small animals from a helicopter, he thinks that Michael Vick is somewhere in prison watching TV saying, I'm in jail. Why? Because there is something profoundly arbitrary. This is the guy who got a long sentence for long being accused of... In a federal penitentiary for dog. transporting dogs across state lines for the purpose of fighting them. And Chris Rock said, a white woman can shoot an animal from a helicopter. Black man can't fight some dogs. And it's not to excuse Vick or dog fighting or anything... But there is something remarkably random about how we view cruelty to animals in this country, like the way uh, certain uh, farming techniques and the raising of chickens or veal or what have you are seen as perfectly acceptable, shooting small animals from a helicopter, the, the fact that a vice presidential candidate can field dress a moose. I mean, if your viewers sh should actually Google what field dressing actually means, it's not as pretty as it sounds. No frills and petticoats. No, no frills and petticoats. That, that's what they try to... S no Louisa May Alcott there with the field <laughs> dressing. See, that's somehow okay, but other things are not. I mean, there, there's something very ugly and arbitrary about it. And I am one of those people who cannot wait for Sarah Palin to exit stage right from history, and hopefully that will come in the weeks to come. Finally, the election sort of felt like a game, in a, or like the, the big game of that day, the Super Bowl sure. maybe of the last four years, with the teams... You know, fanning out and seeing out, see who, seeing who the, had the greatest strength. What was your biggest, funnest moment, or was there one? Honestly, I, I had a moment when I saw how close the website 538.com came to predicting the exactitude of the elections. These are people that predicted the thing in like March or something. Yes, yes, almost down to the state. They they flip. If you flip uh, Indiana, which they got wrong, and Missouri, which both of which you know are hair, hair splitters, they almost had it exactly right. And I'll tell you why I have a warm spot for 538.com. You might know what I'm about it to was say the here. Cumulative polling site. Yep, it was the cumulative polling site that used the regression formula that's used by Baseball Prospectus. And the people who run 538.com are people from the Bill James School of Saber Metrics and this whole idea of using this regression statistical theory in baseball and applying it to politics. <laughs> and I, I love the idea of that wall between sports and politics being eroded. And I feel like this election season, it may actually have been obliterated because, you know, Howard Cosell once said that rule number one of the jockocracy is that sports and politics must never mix. And I love the idea of the jockocracy finally being overthrown. <laughs> and who are the experts? They're the sports predictors. There you go. Dave, thank you so much. It's great to have you. I want to see you again oh, very soon. My privilege, Laura. Congratulations with the book and thank so you. much more. People can find Dave's column at edgeofsports.com. Dave Zimmern is the sports 
columnist for The Nation magazine, the first in many, 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 many years. Thanks for being with us here on Grid TV. My privilege, thanks. Thank you.